Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Mandy. That color is cerulean blue from Color Art. It's a prism pour color. And I am laying the foundation to put down some moon rocks from Color Art. This was inspired from Moon Cusser Art. Uh, Janet does beautiful geode work and um, she's a beautiful resin artist. And so I love that she used moon rocks in one of her geode type pieces. So um, I got this idea from her. So I'm going to link that video for you. So what this is right here is Pebeo CERN Relief, um, which kind of works like a clear glue to build a little bit of a dam. Um, so I got that from Blick, um, but Pixel Paint Designs also sells it, and there's a 10% off discount code below. I also have my Blick link below. So since this is my first time, I kind of built um, those edges around the paint lines I made for the moon rocks, and these are the moon rocks. I'll list the particular color I used um, below. I want to say that it's Poseidon's Grotto, and they're from Color Art, and they are really, really beautiful. So what they are is they're like um, mica flakes, and you can cut them down with a paring knife and use them um, in your art. They're super beautiful. So all I'm doing in this first layer, um, my Pebeo Cern Relief has dried, and I'm just putting a thin layer of resin down, and I'm going to use that as kind of a glue. Um, I'm showing you a bunch of stuff here, and I ended up having to speed this way up. So while I'm letting that resin set a little bit, I'm kind of putting down a layer to go under some crushed glass. And that silver is actually a prism pour silver. Um, and, <clears throat> excuse me. And I mixed it just a little bit in resin. You can use acrylic paint in resin. You just can't use too much or it'll cause your resin to seize up and to cure too fast. Um, so I use that instead of like a silver mica. And so I'm kind of doing this in stages because I want the resin to set up a little bit before I put things on it. Ideally, um, for me, because I tend to use too much resin, I should have done this step and let it dry before I added the layers around it. Um, and you'll see why. I sped this process way up just because it's super time consuming. But I end up using too much resin on the surface. And because I have that tape dam around the sides, some of my color layers kind of bleed into my moon rocks a little bit and it ends up looking a little bit busy. But this was the first time I tried this, so it was super fun and I love doing it. And you can expect to see more. I have a lot of moon rocks and I want to use them, so. Okay, so I'm sorry that you can't see everything I'm showing you, but that is crushed mirror glass. I got it at Michael's. It has kind of a silver undertone. I don't particularly like that it has a white part that shows, but I have it, so I decided to use it. So what I'm showing you there, which I realize is way too fast, is I was using some resin tints from Color Art, and that's my first time using them, and they're super beautiful. Um, you wet them down with 99% alcohol, and when I say wet them down, like you barely get them moist and then you mix them into resin so i used i'll, I'll put the colors i used below <clears throat> but what happened because it was my first time using them i put too much alcohol in and so when i added the resin the resin was too thin and so i had to let it sit for a little bit so the true silver i don't remember if that's what it's called but the prism pour silver color um mixed into resin I mixed too much of it and it was getting too thick while I was doing all this so what I did instead of using any of the colors that I got out that I planned on using is I mixed that silver into these resin tints so it thickened up my resin that was too thin and it thinned down the silver that was too thick so I ended up pretty much doing most all of this with that silver color and those resin tints in some variation. So all the colors I got out to try, <laughs> I ended up not using them because I didn't want to waste resin or paint. So I just ended up tinting those colors. Now this color is called Blue My Mind and this is from Woody's Goodies. Um, and it's a really dark, almost like um, 
dark phthalo green, almost like it's got some black or something in it. It's, it's a cool color with a bluish tint. And um, so I also used some white Alumalite dye, which I probably should have used way earlier in this stage. Again, work in progress, right? I'm learning. Um, just to add some like non-sparkly rings, but, but they were so like randomly placed. <laughs> uh, you know, I couldn't just start with something simple, right? For my first geode type thing, I had to do something completely different. Um, but whatever, that's me, right? I don't do the simple things. So this was still a super fun experiment for me and I really enjoyed it. So I learned a lot and I obviously this video is sped way up for the sake of time. Um, once I have a better understanding of like how the process works for me, I'll talk through a little bit more of the, the pieces, but I will list all the colors and everything in the description box. I used two of those resin tints. Um, I can't remember what the names are right now. Uh, Bahama something. And anyway, I'll put them in the thing. But what I did is where I had some layers that were still too thin. Um, by now, some of them had thickened up. So like that clear layer I just put in is one of those tints. Um, and so, but I basically found ways to use those tints with the silver that I had left. And, um, and I added that uh, blew my mind just to add a dark contrasting color um, that was still in the same color family. So one of the things I've learned in this process is um, sometimes like keep your colors kind of in the same color family and then use neutral colors or whatever. And I did that with this, but this does end up looking a little bit busy. Um, but I still, for my first one, I still really loved it. And I love the tip that Janet gives about making that little tape dam. Um, so after this dried for like an hour, I went and took my heat gun and I took the tape dam off and I just heated up the edges so they kind of rounded over and the sides are taped. So I have, once everything's done, I just have to take off the, the tape on the sides with a heat gun and, and if my edges need to be rounded over again, I can hit it with the heat gun. So anyway, um, in this layer, you can see that I'm just kind of trying to figure out where to put this color. Um, I love this color and I think it looks good with these colors, but some of the places I added it made it a little bit busy. So like you can see that I'm adding it around the moon rocks. Well, I end up putting way too much resin on this layer and that color ends up seeping into those moon rocks, which isn't necessarily bad, but it looks a lot cleaner. Like if I look at it right now, um, than it does after that happens because you know resin is self-leveling and so you, you have to be mindful of that if you use too much of it so um but you know again first time that's kind of why you do those things um and then i had leftover resin in um one of the the tints the green one and <clears throat> i put it in a little geode rock mold and some smaller little crystal molds well by then <clears throat> it had some of the silver in it so it was kind of an opaque green by the time it dried so maybe not what you would normally want for a crystal look but i end up making another geode type painting with that green crystal as like my main thought when i started it it was way too busy and so in a future video, you'll see me clean it up and it starts off like hot mess express, like, you know, good in theory, but way too busy. But then I was like, okay, I think I can, I can save this. And it's not, you know, it's not the best world's best, but it ends up looking a lot better. So that's the fun thing about resin is if you aren't getting what you want, you can add another layer and change it. Um, I'm not saying that nothing in resin has ever passed the point of no return. Like you can overwork something to pieces, but, um, you know, you can always do quite a bit. So after this dries, I'll come in and, uh, mark it with some paint markers just to add the geode lines. At this point, 
you know, watching this, I can see that adding the dark blue my mind color was a good idea, but it also did kind of make things a little bit busier. So sometimes less is more, right? So at this point, I'm just like, okay, well, how can I incorporate it? So it's um, kind of evenly placed throughout the piece. So I'm just basically going in and trying to figure out where to add that or something else um, to the missing pieces. Not missing pieces, but you know, where something's maybe I'm just missing something. So yeah, anyway, I hope you're enjoying the experiment. I know you guys may not be familiar with the fact that I do resin because I don't always do it, but I'm on a real geode kick, so you're going to see more of it. So hopefully you're down for the journey. And of course that allows you to see some resin art pigments because you don't always get to see those either, and they're beautiful. Sadly, I didn't get to use as many of them as I planned in this one, um, but that's okay. So, um, at this point, like, especially now that I'm really like, re-watching this while I voice over, I can see where there was definitely some overworking. Um, but, you know, you got to enjoy the journey. It was a lot of fun to work on it. So here's a close-up before we do any of the paint pens and the flood coat of resin. Uh, so I'll show you that process up next. But the colors are pretty. It's a little busy. But there it is. All right, so here it is after it's been resined. And now we need to go through with our paint markers and create some lines. Here I'm showing you where the resin kind of ran into places I didn't want it to because, you know, resin self levels and I used too much of it. So I'm going to use a mix of Craftsman paint markers from Michaels and Posca pens. And I'll list the colors. I think that's an aqua green, so I'll list them for you. Um, just to know, I'm a bit of a perfectionist sometimes, so I did go and erase a bunch of the lines several times. I used a white, an aqua, a silver, and I think an emerald green, which is really more of a turquoise. So um, most of these markers are oil-based, so when you erase your lines, you do get an oily residue on your piece. So after this, what I did after I let them dry is I went ahead and did a flood coat or two, and I'll show you the finished result after I take off the tape after this video. I significantly sped this up, obviously, because of time, um, but if you prefer a longer video where I talk you through more of the process, just let me know. So I don't have the steadiest hand either, so just know um, that's part of my erasing and redoing is um, I can't even draw stick people. But I tried to focus the lines where, you know, maybe we had some fuzziness and stuff like that. So let me bring you in for a close-up. All right, so here is our wild little experiment um is it perfect no is it busy yes but sorry that's my dog but you know it was my first time trying out the moon rocks i have an idea for how to structure them a little bit different i've already started a different one um as well as a couple of other things but for the first one i'm gonna call it a win so i'll show you the things that kind of went wrong so see here where this blew my mind went into my moon rocks, that was not intended. So had I either created a taller border or let that dry first as the first layer, which is what I did on my second one that I'm working, or my other one that I'm working on, then this would have been a lot cleaner, a lot sleeker, maybe done like a glitter line around the edge, like um, to kind of just separate that. That might have been cool. Um, I did forget to tape the bottom, so let me show you what happened. I, well, I'm working with one hand here. So <laughs> I had a bunch of drips here, and if I sanded them, all that sanding stuff was gonna get all over the top. So I used my heat gun and scraped off these drips. Um, but as a result, my sides were spray painted flat white after they were sanded pretty nicely. And I had to scrape some of those mishaps 
to, you know, just to get that stuff off the bottom. So I'm probably just going to paint the sides white again, but they're still pretty clean. So anyway, um, I learned a lot. Sorry if you can hear my vacuum, but I learned a lot and I definitely enjoyed it and I will do more. I have a lot of moon rocks. I have a lot of colors. I like the way they look. I'm also going to do more traditional geodes using just like glass and stuff. In fact, I started another one of those today. So thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys and all your support. Hope you're down for experiments that are not always blooms. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Um, let me know what you think. Did you like this guy? Did you like the experiment? Okay. Thanks for watching. Bye.